Hello football fans, this is Eric Overland alongside Aaron Kishman. We are the football fanaticos, the football fanatics, whatever. When it comes to soccer or American football, we're the dudes that you want to talk to. You can see me pimping my Dan Marino 84 jersey, and you can see my boy Aaron here pimping his Chelsea kit. He's got the nice fat cigar too. So let's cut through the chase. Let's go right to it. Let's discuss NFL football and specifically the love we have, our team, the Miami Dolphins. First off, um, let's go to the NFL draft. Let's look at who we drafted and our thoughts on the players. Our first round pick was Minka Fitzpatrick from the University of Alabama. All right, I am a Kane fan and this draft was very hard to deal with on many levels because most of the guys we drafted were from rival schools which we usually hate or strongly dislike as well as would never cheer for but in this case this could be a blessing in disguise Fitzpatrick is a four-year starter at the University of Alabama a four-year star and a guy that can literally play anywhere in the secondary it seems whether it's any of the safety positions, whether it's cor cover corner, or even some of the nickel slots and in some of those packages. I like the pick, although we do have Rashad Jones, maybe our best player, who also plays safety. It wasn't a position of need, but it was a position of best available. Aaron, your thoughts. Thank you, Eric. Okay, so here we got the first pick, Mika Fitzpatrick. Eric called it. Exactly right. Us Canes fans, we are sick and tired of Alabama guys and stuff, but guess what? Those guys can ball going all the way back to what, Larry Little or whatever. So, Alabama, real deal, okay? And the best part. Nick Saban. Yeah, fuck Nick Saban. Yeah. Nick Satan, that whatever guy, okay? So, fuck him. But anyway, Minka is the real deal. I like his temperament. And finally, we got ourselves a safety, right? We need a free safety, not another strong safety. Okay, I'm sick of us having always strong safeties. So we finally got a center fielder that go out there and catch the damn ball. Run sideline to sideline. Yes, I don't sir. give a fuck if he can tackle. He can. Yep. But I don't need him to tackle. And they're saying, oh, well, he could be a good corner. Gives a shit. Runs a four four seven, Solid. Easy. And he's been calling that many times. And... He's smart. You need a smart safety, not just a brain smart, you know, the books guy, but like a football field guy that's smart. And he's all smarts when it comes to that. You know, we all know Nick Saban. Sorry, but he's the smartest guy on defense. He just is. And his mini-me is Mika. So, totally happy with that. Okay, moving on to my boy, Gasicki. Another goddamn team I can't stand, Penn State. But... Guess what? This guy can ball. He's he's in the, you know, you know the the mold where you're gonna go right down the field, up the seam. He's not gonna be uh, five yards cloud of dust block. He's not gonna do all that stuff. But who cares? That's not what the NFL is like anymore. He's gonna rip the field and you're gonna stick it right up your ass. Okay, it's gonna be great. And I cannot wait. We've been waiting for a baller like this. A reverse the blade. It's going down. So I'm looking forward to it. Here you go. What do you think about Eric about Gesicki? Well, Gusecki, we got a Penn State tight end, okay? This is a school that's mostly been known for their linebackers in the past, but they have been putting out some decent players on on uh, the rest of the skill position levels. Gusecki is supposedly a guy that will catch anything over the top, over the middle, across the field, yada, 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 yada. The problem is a lot of knocks on him have been that the guy, even with the size, he's like 6'5", 249, but the guy cannot block worth a lick. I have a paper bag. So, yeah, that's not a good thing, but hopefully this is where he can adjust to the NFL and do what he needs to do and make it as, as a tight end because it's a position that we will desperately need with a quarterback like Ryan Tannehill who's going to have to throw underneath stuff until our offensive line is intact and where it should be. An underneath guy, just like a Rob Gronkowski, only we need him to learn how to block. Like a Kelsey. Yep, like Kelsey. a Kelsey, Travis Kelsey. But he's got to learn how to block. Next up, Jerome Baker. Oh, boy. Outside linebacker with wheels, wheels, wheels. The guy runs a 4-5-3. Three. 
He's super fast, but he's from the Ohio State Suckeyes. Lacey Buss, if you're watching this, Suckeyes suck. Beth Walsh, if you're watching this, the Suckeyes suck. All right, we're going to take this guy. We're going to do what we can with him. He's got the wheels. We, we've had horrific luck with Ohio State players. See Ted Ginn. See Eric Kumaro. See a lot of guys, man. But, dude, when it comes down to is he's got to be a guy that pans out because Keith Byers, even in his later years, did a little something. This guy has to do a lot. Aaron, your thoughts on Baker? Baker is, looks like he's probably our worst pick that we got. Um, I know he's only a third-round pick, but I don't like this at all. This screams a Tenenbaum pick because it's like uh, they're like, well, he was really great in one game, and that's usually what he does. He, he likes you for one thing, goes, this guy was amazing, and then the rest of his career was a wash, and that's exactly what it looked like. He basically is coming in. He looks like borderline backup, all right, and he's small. But he's fast, and he's supposed to be the tight end killer. That's what his job is. He's supposed to finally stop the tight end against us. But who knows? We'll see what he's got. I hope he can ball. Uh, I expect Aaron, nothing you, out of him. What do you think of our next pick, though, Durham Smythe, the Notre Dame tight end? This is yes. Okay, so we had another. We had Ohio State, the schools. Now we got Notre Dame. Okay, but um, Notre, Lame. Notre Lame and all that crap. You know, Rudy, all lowercase. Punk bitch, you were off sides. And your best friend went to Miami, and he was smart because he died rich. Uh, uh. Okay? What do you think about that, Beth? Anyway, so, uh, all right. Durham Smythe. This guy can block. He's supposed to be a good guy. He can catch the ball. He's going to get maybe two passes a game. Okay? Great. And he's going to block. Now, the thing is, Gusecki's got to be able to block a little bit so we don't have to have two tight ends on the fucking field every time. Okay? So we'll see what happens. Uh, but he looks like a good, solid pick. And, and they're sick. And the, this is a good sign. The coach is like... I am sick and tired of having these tight ends that can't do their fucking job. I can't. So he's like, I want a guy I can catch. I want a guy I can block. Just I want that job taken care of. And that's what he did. He got a guy I can catch. He got another guy I can block. So he's he's got that control. He's not going to worry about Fazano or these other scrubs that we've been having. Uh, okay, next one is Caleb Balaj. Is that right? Yes. Okay, Caleb Balaj. Here you go. What do you think about him? Um, Arizona State running back. Never know with Pac-10 guys. I know with quarterbacks, they're going to suck balls, especially if they're from USC, where you got butt fumble Mark Sanchez, a.k.a. Dirty Sanchez. Yeah, Matt Leinart, who's drinking with underage girls somewhere. Oh, yeah, but this is Arizona State. Wasn't Ajayi an Arizona State guy? or uh, he, he, he was definitely a West Coast guy. Oh, yeah, he was uh, Nevada. Nevada, Utah, okay, okay. So what, we don't know what to really expect from the kid. But that's why we brought in Frank Gore, ex Kane, the U. Go ahead, throw it up, Aaron. Show the fans what's up. That's right. That's right. And we have Kenyon Drake. So, you know, luckily not that Drake because we all know that's a punk bitch. But uh, Kenyon Drake, can we can, we can, he can play football, and he doesn't have to. This guy. Can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let, let's see. But it's an Arizona State kid. He's not going to be expected to do much right away, especially with Gore who's being really brought in in the latter stages of his career, sadly. I wish we could have had him earlier, but, you know, it is what it is, and we'll see. We'll see. I just don't know what to expect from the kid because, realistically, again, someone from the West Coast and a running back might be brittle. We'll see. What do you think, Aaron? All right. Well, Kalen Balaj, he is a West Coast product like we're talking about, and we know those guys do not play any defenses. So, you know, who knows what he's got in him. But the guy is built like a beast. He's got all the measurables. Usually that's not what you want, but that's why he got picked in the fourth round. And the guy had eight touchdowns in one game. That's like kind of a bullshit stat. Who cares? But Unless we're talking about Madden football. The, the, like yeah, sports, or your fantasy team or something. Yeah, yeah. It'd be great. But, you know, look, he got eight touchdowns in one game. At least that means he doesn't get gassed. Okay? <laughs> all right, so he's got something. And he's got balls. I, I like this guy. He, you know, I think he's going to be all right. I, I can roll with him. I don't like taking that third-round pick that we got, the linebacker. That was garbage. But uh, aside from that, Kim Blage, that's one of the fun guys that he'll be fun to watch, especially in training camp. We will be shooting in at training camp. Our okay. next video, we'll be doing that 
and uh, we'll hopefully get some ladies, maybe some cheerleaders, speak about it. And uh, you know, might even get Cam Wake on a, on a on a mic. I'm just kidding, but <laughs> but <laughs> but we'll get up there. Tannehill's wife for sure. We don't need Tannehill. We need his wife. <laughs> well, uh, lastly, I guess we could cover uh, this Cornell uh, Armstrong, Su Southern Mississippi. Yeah, really. Well, let's not talk about that. Aaron, why don't you give me your thoughts on the team? I just want, have one point to make because this is one that we will discuss further when we do our Canes podcast, and that is I cannot believe how upset I am as a Miami Dolphins and a Canes fan that once again we got suckered, but this time we got suckered bad. And what I'm talking about is how did we let the New England Patriots throw us their crumbs as Slick Rick would say, with Danny Amendola, and then turn around and Bill Belichick's in the building, and we all saw it coming, and the Patriots just upgraded at the slot position with Braxton Berrios. It was heartbreaking. I threw beer cans, I threw soda cans, I yelled at the top of my lungs. This stuff has to stop happening. The Dolphins need to get in touch and realize that they and the Canes play on the same field, and just like the old years, how is it that both of these teams that play together don't even know each other? It has to change. But what do you think about the team? Like, give me a synopsis. What can we expect from Tannehill? What do you think about our receiving core? Uh, what do you think about the defense, Aaron? And then pretty much we'll end it with that. Agreed. I'll piggyback on the Berrios uh, comment there. Uh, yeah, that guy, I was, you know, I was thinking maybe he might not be an NFL guy. You know, maybe he might be one of those edge guys that just doesn't want to turn out, but you want him to turn out, but he doesn't. But uh, kind of like we had a linebacker, Hull, he was one of those guys. He, he just couldn't play in the league. But Barrios was looking pretty good. Then I went back and watched the FSU game. Holy God, that guy was baller from the top to bottom. And, and the Notre he, Dame game. Notre Dame, cool. and, and he, he owned it. He was clutch as hell. There was a play right before the final play. It's third down. And he catches a five-yard pass. He breaks a tackle along the sideline. Could have gone out like a little bitch. No, he breaks a tackle, goes down the line, and just gets the first down. And that caused us to have to not have to kick the field goal right there, which would have tied the game. Who knows what would have happened? Tally. Okay? He comes down, and it, look, the guy is great. So, and, of course, they got to get him Patriots. Got to give him the sixth round, bro. I mean, come on, man. I mean, at least take him to fifth if you don't like him, just so that those assholes don't uh, take him. What, like a Jai? Yeah. Like, or, or even worse, Jarvis Landry? I I'm, mean, what the hell was that all about? Uh, we got duped by the Cleveland fucking Browns. Yep. Yeah, they Fifth owned us. Round draft pick for Jarvis Landry. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, Jai. I, I only bought his $300 fucking jersey and wore it three times. And then he got traded. Brutal. <laughs> but, Brutal. but anyway. Um, a dolphin fan. Yeah, that's, that's dolphin fan life. But uh, all good. And then, uh, well, offense, yeah, yeah, offense. Okay, so, hey, look, man, I'm one of those Tannehill believers, actually. I think he's uh, quite good. Uh, I think he's accurate. Um, you know, he, you know, people make fun of him because he isn't, like, you know, yell at the crowd. Well, you know, with Dan Marino's here, people used to bitch about Dan Marino yelling at everybody going, oh, he's such a bully. Hey, Jay Cutler, Whatever. this is for your career. Yeah. Smoke him if you got him. Fuck. Goodbye, Cutler. So, anyway, Marino, okay, nobody's going to be a Marino. But Tannehill came in. I like the guy. He got hurt. He, oh, here's another quick little thing. Our doctors at the Miami Dolphins, or could they be any worse? Going back, O.J. McDuffie, bro. You got the, you got the toe with the turf toe. The fucker never played again. They couldn't get him right. And then we had uh, Culpepper, right? It was like Culpepper or Breeze. They couldn't pick the right fucking guy. They took the guy that was hurt. And here's another oh, thing. That was a horrible one, man. We got burned by yeah. Drew Breeze twice. And not just that, but then when Culpepper, when he, when they, he brought him in, his knee was hurt, right? But if they had just fucking waited another month or two, he would have been healthy. He'd have been fine. We rushed and we him. did. We rushed him. He couldn't fucking play. I swear to God, I it, Dan Marino and that guy in training camp, I haven't seen that ever before. Chucking the ball like those guys could do. So I mean, we, we blew it there. That was the doctor's fault. Then we get Tan Hill coming in here. I know he's got like some doctor cred and you know and all stuff. Blah blah blah. But look, he he. He's got to go through the team doctors. Doctors have to okay it and say, yeah, sure, you don't need surgery. Nobody else has done it before, but I'm sure you're okay. You seem to heal fast. Boom, blows it out, not even contact injury. So our doctors are the guys that need to get their fucking ass fired. I'm sick of those assholes. Those are people that have set us back. Anyway, final thoughts, brother. 
Uh, well, with the Dolphins season, I mean, I guess all that's left is for us to make our bold uh, okay. predictions. I would like nothing more than a 9-7 and seven season and to possibly get a wild card spot. I know that the Jets are going to suck balls. And Jamie Firestone, if you're watching this, you fucking piece of shit, punk bitch. Yo, we're jumping ship from George's League. So you know what? You could sit there and play with yourself like you always do. And yo, you better work on those baby hands, son, because those fingers can't fit into NFL size gloves. But regardless, the Bills are going to be on, on the up and up. And the Patriots, as usual, will probably win the division and will be competing there at the end. So it's up to us. If we can step up, if Tannehill can have a monster year, if our defense can have a good year, if Minka Fitzpatrick and you know and Rashad Jones can turn into the best uh, safety tandem since Sean Taylor and Ed Reed, who knows, man? It, the possibilities are endless, but we have to step up. We have to play good ball. We need the offensive and defensive lines to be – at their best. Otherwise, I, I, I cannot. I want nine and seven, but it could be very easily an eight and eight. Aaron. Okay, I was gonna say my prediction. Uh, hey, look, this team could go six wins. We don't know. I don't think it's gonna be that at all. If that happens, they're rebooting the whole fucking team. By the way, I feel confident about Tannehill. I'm looking at the schedule. I know you're probably not gonna agree. I'm talking ten wins. I'm talking ten damn wins. Ten wins That's and. Cool. And I think no matter what, it's wild card okay. that we get in the playoffs. Yep. And uh, so, you know, we got some work to do. But I feel good, man, about 10 wins. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, Eric and Aaron, this is it for now. We will be doing Kane's podcast next. Until then. Peace out, brother. <laughs>